Hey friends, this is Sketch Start and I'm Marla. I'm so glad you're here. Today we are drawing cherries. Okay, so to get started, today we're drawing cherries, and this is just such a great, simple, fun thing to draw. And before we get started, I just wanna talk about a few principles of art that are gonna be so great to kind of keep in mind while I'm drawing uh, the cherry itself. So the first thing is, is like the actual shape of the cherry. It's pretty, the basic shape with the stem is that it's round and almost like a sphere. And one of the very first videos that I posted was a video drawing basic shapes, like um, a cube and a pyramid and a sphere. And the reason why I did this is because this is kind of the basis for everything that we're gonna draw going forward. Like once you take the basic principle of a sphere, like you get the hang of drawing a circle. And then after you've drawn a circle, you wanna make it look three dimensional and you learn the shading to bring that dimension uh, to the actual sphere shape. And then you start on things like a cherry where the shape is circular, but not perfectly circular. And you're still adding things like shading to make it look dimensional and uh, to make it look realistic. And those principles are, are the same. You just adapt it to what whatever it is that you're drawing. The next thing I wanna talk about is color. And to do that, I wanna show a color wheel. And this is something that artists use to reference before they, so just kind of like a cheat in order to kind of look and see how colors are gonna interact with each other as they're making choices for what they're drawing and uh, what they're gonna put down. Specifically, like if you're, you're painting or drawing or anything like that where it's like not on the computer where you can't, erase it this is a great reference to have so that way you don't kind of like experiment on your drawing so what we're going to be talking about specifically is the fact that a cherry uses the colors green and red and on the color wheel if you see here green and red are directly opposite to each other on the color wheel they are complementary colors and what that means is just that, that they're directly opposite on the color wheel. Other colors that are complementary are blue and orange and yellow and purple. And what this means is that when you put these colors on your drawings, like the eye is instantly gonna go there. It's gonna make, it makes the colors more vibrant and more vivid and again, draws your eye to that. The other thing is, is that these colors don't blend well together. When you blend these two colors, it makes kind of a muddy gray brown. And so they really don't blend well, but they definitely, when you use them, like if there's something in your drawing where you specifically want someone's eye to go there, that's kind of a technique to use. That's one of many techniques is that you'll use complementary colors to kind of draw the focus there. The last thing I wanna talk about is how simple something like this is to draw. And I was inspired by summer and what I love about summer and just things that I enjoy. And this was one of the things on the list. And if you are um, uninspired, you can't think of ideas to draw, that's definitely a way to start. Just think of very basic things like that. Like just start asking yourself basic questions like what's the season? Uh, what do I like about the season? What's something very simple that I can just get started with and you just get going with it and that's what pushes you forward and inspires you to draw your next big project and it's something very simple no pressure and fun to do to kind of get the inspiration rolling so i'm really excited to draw this today let's get going Okay, so to get started, I'm just taking my pencil here and lightly drawing in each one of the shapes. I've started with just drawing the cherry shape and I'm gonna wait to pencil in the stems until after I get that done because I found that if you just get the cherry portion drawn in first, it looks so much better and you have so much more control over the look of the drawing to put in the stems last because they're just so delicate and so small that you kind of want to um, control the direction they're going in and the kind of overall look and it just helps create that effect of being like more realistic and dimensional that I'm going for 
are in this drawing. So I'm taking these pencils and I'm using a range of pencils for this drawing. I'm using both graphite pencils and colored pencils. And I'm using a range of colors for each of them. For the graphite pencils, I'm using a range that goes from H to uh, about 6B. It goes, I used H, HB, 2B, 4B, and 6B for these drawings. And then for the colored pencils, I used a range of a yellow red, a blue red, a very dark uh, red, and then an almost blue color for the cherry portion, and then various greens and browns for the stem portion. I list all my uh, tools and equipment in the description box, so you can definitely look there for the specifics of all the colors and the, the pencils that I use. So I'm finishing up this first cherry. I've kept, I wanna keep the area really clean um, and free of like extra lines since these are so small and delicate. Uh, having control over what the lines and just keeping things very um, clean and tight is really important for this because it helps it look more realistic and kind of gives helps give the impression that I wanna give, which is that these are really small and bright and, and vibrant and kind of glowing. And I'm layering in the reds here. As you can see, there's a lot of different reds. I never use a black. Like when I go through and shade with the darkest color, I use a bluish purplish color that's almost black, but isn't that harsh and isn't that heavy. It keeps that light kind of beautiful glowing color and it blends really well with the reds and the white that I'm using for the piece. Now I'm going through cleaning everything up and I'm gonna go through and draw the last two cherries. As you can see, this one on the side, I kinda of wanted to challenge myself. I didn't want them to all just be upright. I wanted it to look more realistic where they're all positioned um, in different ways. I wanted to challenge myself to kinda of see what that looked like and see what I could do. And definitely this was, this was a little bit tougher and I had to really take my time with this and just kind of keep penciling in the layers, starting with the H pencil and then just working up from there and kind of um, taking my time with it. The whole drawing itself took like an hour and a half. I've obviously sped this up quite a bit, but it really is, I was drawing very, very slowly to get all these details in and just kind of build up as I went along. When you see the initial parts of the drawing, it looks, it doesn't look great. Like I was looking at it going, is this gonna, is this gonna work out? Like I, I actually did several trial drawings before I got to filming here because I was like, I, I just don't know if this is gonna work out or not. And it just turns out that I needed more patience and more layers of tones. And uh, so once I started, you know, I started with the very lightest tones of like an H, an HB, a 2B. And then once I gradually worked up to like the 4B and the 6B, everything started coming together. And I really had more control over the overall look. Because the thing is, is when you put in these, as you put in these layers, you're also putting in the shape um, and the curves and kind of the highlights and just doing this very gradually and slowly helps give it that more realistic look. It also makes it really fun to draw because it's kind of revealing itself to you as you as you go along. Um, the stem, definitely keep in mind that that's also three-dimensional. As thin and skinny and tight as that is, it's still a round object and so definitely put the shading in for that. I've added a little bit of shadow here, and that's everything. I hope you liked this video. Thank you so much for watching. Um, please subscribe to my channel, comment in the comment section. I'd love to hear from you. Uh, this is Sketch Dirt, and I'm Marla. Bye.